what it is about a text that speaks to you. And in particular, for your fifth symphony, after having written four purely instrumental symphonies, for your fifth symphony, you decided to include voices in the symphony and, and text. And um, he wondered why that happened then. And the other part of his question that I thought was interesting is that he's asking how the inclusion of a text that carries with it some sort of specific meaning and maybe program, how that changes your thoughts about the form of the piece itself. Yeah, the text is very often not exactly a choice. That is, um, I don't actually often go looking for text. Um, recently, for instance, there was a, I wrote a piece on a Louise Glick texts, uh, Seven Ages, which starts out with a poem of hers called The Seven Ages. And that's a poem that leads off one of her books that I had read maybe 50 times, but I think the reason I'd read it 50 times, I couldn't, I didn't get the poem. I mean, I didn't, I didn't get why it was called The Seven Ages. First of all, there only seemed to be about three ages referred to anywhere. Uh, it seemed to me to be extremely specifically related to uh, some very big traversal from like even, old, even infancy to old age, but I couldn't quite get that to fit with the lines. It wasn't until I'd been through that process as a reader that I thought the way that I could deal with that text is I could set it. And it was a very rigorous poem to set. It was a piece, a poem with certain repetitions which had to be responded to somehow and they were always, in terms of the musical rhythm, at a very difficult or almost inopportune point. Um, in other words, it's a poem that was teaching me something about, giving me something about continuity I wouldn't have had to deal with had I not set that poem. And I think that's as good an explanation as any for, for why I would go ahead with something I've been reading and want to set it. Um, in the case of the Fifth Symphony, the Miwash poem was, uh, so big with such a strange uh, ambiguity of tone. Was it telling the story? Was the narrator in the story or was he outside it? Um, why were the details alternately the ancient world, some imaginary ancient world, and very f familiar present things like cars whipping along in the, in the highway? Um, it, the only way I could sort of, in the end, kind of confront that was to actually try to set the poem. And the best, feel, the best and worst feeling is often starting a setting and thinking, um, I'm glad I'm only at the beginning here. I can't imagine how I'm going to do this or that. You know, There's stuff waiting that it's just, I, I, can't, I can't face it. Um, that's probably the kind of, of, of experience I'm looking for with, with the text very often. Just, this sense of, of, I don't know how to get around that. And in the case of the Miwash, I got to the, there's a long section at the end where uh, he is uh, in just, where the hero, who's, who is obviously Orpheus, is in just a complete conundrum of, of almost arrest. He can't act. He's just, he's, he's almost like he's philosophizing in, uh, he's lost his wife at the second time He's made the fatal error and he's sitting there, he's standing there just in a, a terrible stuck place and the poem is stuck in this really extremely strange philosophical muddle. And I thought that would be a place if I were just thinking operatically, I would cut it. But I've got to come up with something. And as I got closer and closer, it struck me that the texture of the orchestra there had to be a bunch of instruments all playing detuned. Um, that's the place in the piece where everybody in the wind section is blowing on uh, you know, sort of uh, quarter tonally altered parts of their instrument. Um, and the harmony becomes both in a certain way colorful but also very stagnant. And I thought the only way to get through this passage and make it at all dramatically convincing is the music becomes stagnant. The language of the music becomes somehow unfocused um, so that we can come out of the other end where he suddenly has this moment of clarity. To me, a not particularly uh, congenial moment of clarity because what he's really saying is, well, I, yes, I lost her the second time, but the world is beautiful and the sun is out and a very typically Miwash 
resolution. But I thought that out of this sort of thicket of rather uh, blocked sounds, that moment can at least emerge as something believable. But it was having that blockage waiting for me in the poem that was in a way exciting about right. it. So there's two things about making a setting that have always interested me. One, that the, the words give you a chance to write something that you, uh, a kind of musical form you've always wanted to write and needed a sanction for it. And then the converse of that, that the words are setting up something that you know is going to put you in a, a tough situation you haven't been in before. Mm -hmm. uh, that is something you don't know how to do. Right. So both those things are, I think, the help the helpful thing about finding, the, finding a text that you want to set. And the other thing about text that I understood very early is that you, you can't respect it too much. Mm -hmm. if, if you just love it and you think everybody, oh, you should hear this poem, you won't do enough with it. 